I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a very important video on box and whisker plots. Now this question is from previous test paper. I'd like you to pause the video, copy the question, try the solution and then look into my suggestions. Box and whisker plot can also be used for continuous data. Normally we have been plotting box and whisker plots for discrete data. Now in this example we have continuous data. So here is an example where we are going to plot box and whisker diagram for continuous data. How do you recognize that the data is continuous? Well, let's look into it. We are given scores and frequency. Let us say these are scores or the marks from a test for a particular class. So the scores between 11 to 21, one person got that mark and two persons scored between 21 and 31. Now when you look into these set of intervals, you will note that the lower interval in the first case 11 is included. X is greater than equal to, but X is less than 21. 21 is not included in the first interval. So the scores included are from 11 to 20, right? 21 is actually included in the next interval, right? But not 31, 31. So the upper limit is not included, lower limit is included in each interval. So that is what you note here. Now each interval in this particular example is of 10, right? So 11 to 21, not including 21 will give us 21 minus 11 or 10 positions in between. Now let's look into this in further details. We are given the frequency. Now to find box and whisker, what are we trying to find? We are actually trying to find five things. One, we are looking for the lowest position, right? So the lowest point, we are also looking for the highest point. We are looking for median, which we call second quartile, and uh, we are looking for the first quartile and the third quartile, right? These are the five things we are looking for. So basically, these quartiles divide our data into four parts, as you can see, right? So this middle part is called the interquartile. Now, so that is important to make the whisker diagram, and whisker diagrams are plots, so we always label it right so the x horizontal axis should be clearly labeled now here we learn a technique of finding the medians these are all medians so this one is the median for the whole data q1 is median for the first half and q3 is for the later half correct so that's how it is kind of distributed so let's begin by finding q2 how do we do that so first step here is to look into cumulative frequency. We have frequency that is numbers for each score. So we'll actually add another column here. Now what I will do since I have very less space here, I will add the column on the left side. Normally we do it on the right side, okay? Uh, but here, since I'm having less space, I will write this as cumulative in short, I hope you understand frequency. Okay, basically it is the sum running total and it is always increasing. So to begin with, for the first score, it is just one within this interval. Then you add one and two to get three. And then you add three and two, I mean. So you add the first one and then to get to this, you add the previous one to it. Now three and four will give you seven. Seven plus seven is 14. 14 plus 10 is 24, 24 plus 12 will give you 36, 36 plus 5 is 41, plus 4 is 45, plus 2 is 47, right? So that means the total number of students involved are 47, okay? So that is the total frequency, right? So, so we have sigma f or 47. In this particular case, when we are talking about box and whisker diagram, we use the number n, right? So total number n could be lowercase is 47. 
Now this number is key for us to find these quartiles. Midway really means that center value, right? The median in true sense. So what is the median for us? So let's do the calculations on this side. So we are saying Q2. So we'll calculate for Q2 first. So Q2 is, we'll first find its position. Where is it located? To find the position, we will divide n, that number, plus 1 by 2 to get the center value. So basically the formula is n plus 1 by 2. n could be lowercase. So it is 47. So 47 plus 1 is 48 divided by 2. So 48 divided by 2 is 24. So Q2 is the 24th position. This means 24th position, right? So what number comes at 24th position? So we look at cumulative frequency and we find, yes, 24th position means it comes right there, right? So, so up to 14, right? And then 24th. So that means in this particular group. Now 51 to 61, 61 not included, highest number is 60 here, right? It has actually 10 elements. It has 10 data values and there are 10 positions here. So what we also assume in finding the median is uniform distribution. Let me write down this very clear. Uniform distribution. That is to say all these 10 elements, we'll assume them to be 51, 52, 53, 54 till 60. You get my point. Uniformly distributed. So 24 is kind of the end value. So we'll take Q2 as equal to 60 in this example. Now this is very critical to think about. We are not taking the middle value, right? Uh, we're trying to be more precise here. You could, you could take the middle value. That will not be very wrong. But strictly speaking, uh, we could take a judgment and reason it out why 60 is the right value. Since 24 is at the edge, do you see that? So we'll take 60 as Q2. Now let's get to, let's say Q1. So for Q1 also, let us find the position first. So position, how do you find position of Q1? So that is n plus 1 divided by 4, right? So that is 48 divided by 4, correct? 48 divided by 4. So that gives us 12th position, right? So 12th position. Look into the cumulative frequency and you will notice that we have 14 here, right? So 12th position is right in between. There are 7 in this, right? There are 7 in this. So, so 7 and there are 7 elements in this. 14 is the highest, 12th is kind of closer to higher value, but we could take the mid value in this particular case, correct? So, so maybe higher. So we have some discretion since we don't know the exact numbers. We are given an interval. Do you understand the concept? So, so the answers may vary. So Q1 for us should be taken as, since this is 14, our number is 12 on the higher side. So these numbers are 41, 42 till 50. So a good choice. And there are seven in them. Good choice could be, uh, let us say 46, right? So I'm taking purposely higher than the mid value of 45, correct? I could have taken 47 or 48 also in this, right? Okay, so I'm taking 46. So there is some discretion, as you can see, how am I picking up the numbers? There are no numbers in between, right? So we are assuming some based on uniform distribution. Do you get the point? Correct. Now let's look into Q3. But I hope with this concept is clear. This is most important, okay? Position, first position of Q3. This is 3 fourth of 48, is that okay? 3 fourth of 48, that means three times 12 or 36th position. Now 36th position again happens to be at the edge, right? So 36th position is also at the edge for us. Uh, we are saying cumulative frequency of 36. And so, and there are 12 elements. So safely in this particular case, we could take Q3 as the value 70. 
71 is not included. 70 is the highest number in this interval. You should understand that part, right? Okay. So we got our quartiles, which are <coughs> 60 is the median, and the lower quartile is 46, higher or third quartile is 70. How about the lowest and the highest number? So let's look into that also. The lowest number is in the interval 11 to 21. So this number 1 could be anywhere in between. Do you get the point? To be on safe side, we'll take this as the right middle. So we're going to take lowest number as 15, the center value. So when, you know, just to avoid the ambiguity, there's just one number. Assume it to be centrally placed in the interval. That's better. As far as the highest number is concerned, we have a group 91 to 100, right? 101, that means. Two values, we'll again take this as the center value of 95. Do you get the point? So the highest value I'm going to take as 95. So that is how we get all our values. So we have Q1 as 46, Q2 as 60, Q3 as equals to 70. And now we can actually plot box and whisker plot, right? So, so what we will do here is, since we are running out of space, we'll use this space here. So let us say that is the horizontal axis for us. Is that okay? Now on this horizontal axis, we'll start with the median, which is 60. So this is our median, okay? So this value here represents 60. Q3 is 70. So let's say this is 70 for us. Okay, so this is 70, 10 units to the right. So, and then Q1 is 46. So 60, so let's go for the scale first. This is 50, correct? And then that should be 40. Is it okay? 30. And then 20. Okay. And then 10, because we have 15 as the lowest value. We are not talking about outliers in this particular example, right? So we are neglecting outliers. Let me make a note. Without outliers. Okay, we'll talk about outliers in a different video. Okay, remember that. Uh, there are a few already there. So we'll talk about outliers later. So 80, 90, and let's say this is 100, okay? So 46 is Q1, so 46 will be somewhere here. So that becomes the box. Correct? So this is the box. And the right side, the highest point is 95, which will be midway. So let's say this is 95 for us. Okay, so this is 95. And the lowest is 15. So 15 is kind of here. So that becomes the box and whisker plot for us and the values as we have already written down lowest value is 15 the highest is 95 q1 is 46 q2 is 60 and q3 is 70 for us as you know interquartile range will be 70 minus 46 is that okay so interquartile range will be 70 minus 46 which is 24 so we could write interquartile range as 24. Okay, but that gives you a fairly accurate box and whisker plot. I'd like you to go through this video once again so that you understand the concepts. Plotting box and whisker plot for continuous data is kind of tricky and therefore we don't have many examples. This one is kind of unique. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Thank you and all the best.